We have already selected and bought the fabrics for our In this week we are now cutting the pieces. But before we even start, let's talk about fabric preparation. Are you one of those who love pre-washing the fabrics? So go for it and add a bit of starch to your washing process. So all your fabrics are already starch prepared. I'm personally in the non-before wash club. I just sew my unwashed fabrics together because I love them off the boat. I would then rather soak the completed top in cold water to let it shrink before quilting. But this is about personal preferences. So in each case, for this quilt, it is crucial that we starch before cutting. So if you are also in the non-before wash club, spray starch your fabrics right at the beginning. Why is this so important? For our blocks, we have very long edges cut on the bias. And you know, bias edges are tending to stretch. So to ensure accurate seams later, we have to lock those biased edges a bit by pre-starching all fabrics. I use my buttercup project bag to have my project all together. So here's my fabric assortment. In this week, we are about preparing our fabrics. We will first start in starch the fabrics a little bit. Why would we do so? Because you know, with the 16 inch large blocks, we have long edges on the bias and those tend to stretch very much. So when we starch our fabrics, we can work against the stretching a bit. So let me demonstrate why that makes sense. I have this large piece over here and I want to cut that with a bias cut. You see, this is how I handle my setting to do large bias cuts, like that. Now I cut through. So, to compare the effect, I will start this one over here. I use spray starch, but you can also go and starch all your fabrics in advance while you are pre-washing them in your machine and add some starch to the washing machine. So spray starching is something if you only want to starch these parts of your fabrics, which are really actually used in the end. So this is my jibber piece, and this is not the, the, the not starch piece. So you see, if I stretch that one, it's very flexible, and this one starched is quite stiff, and it doesn't distort that much. So if you feed it through your machine, and when we tend to feed it through the machine, we tend to stretch it a bit. So starching will prevent from that distortion. So I recommend that you go and starch all your fabrics, which I will do now. Next, we'll prepare our templates. We need some templates for the triangles. There are basically three different sizes of triangles. Make yourself some paper templates. I recommend using some craft paper or newspaper, which you get on large rolls. Draw a square of the size given in the pattern. Then cut your triangle by either splitting it into half as diagonally or even quarters diagonally, as in template B. These templates include quarter inch seam allowance, and the ground line of the bottom determines the direction of the fabric grain. For the blocks with the half circles, you need some paper templates which come with your pattern. Print them out while you make sure the settings of your printer are set to actual size or 100% to ensure the correct size. You can also check if you got the correct size with the one inch proof. Glue paper sheets together and cut your templates, including the seam allowance, out. I show you mine, which are for the lap size quilt. I want 
once all your fabrics are prepared for cutting, now it's the exciting moment to cut into the fabrics. Ooh, that's always a bit gripping. There's a cutting chart for the pattern that shows you exactly how to cut the individual pieces out of the fabric. You will first start with your border strips. These are the largest pieces of the complete quilt and should be cut and set aside right at the beginning. I like to cut mine a little bit longer so they can later be adjusted to the actually needed lengths. And then follow your cutting chart for the block pieces. But before you start, here's my personal tip. When cutting, I like to cut my triangle shapes slightly larger. Blocks with bias seams tend to get a bit out of shape and larger pieces make for a slightly oversized block, which can then easily be trimmed off to the accurate measurements. Also, I like to add a quarter inch seam allowance to the straight edges of the shapes for the curved seams. Again, it makes for a slightly oversized block, which can then easily be trimmed off to accurate measurements. So grab a sharp rotary cutter, turn on some uplifting music and start the adventure. Now when we have starched our fabric, it's finally time to cut into the fabrics and this is mostly exciting. So we have first to prepare a couple of templates for the triangles and also for our curved pieces. So with the 16 inch block, the triangles will get quite large and we will use our own shape of paper to make it. So I would recommend that you go and buy yourself a roll of craft paper. This gives you enough place for those large triangles. And just for the sake of it here on the video, I will do it on a smaller sheet of paper and this is so you get the idea of it. So we have basically two different triangles to draw and A and C look the same and they are 90 degree triangles and we know the size of the base down here. So we draw first the base down here with the given size. So this is our starting point and I do any random size just to give you an idea. This is the end point. And now I have to draw a 90 degree angle here. So I go to my ruler's guidelines and do a 90 degree line here. And from that point, my starting point, I use the 45 degree guideline. So this guideline has to match my baseline and start drawing and then I elongate the line until it crosses the 90 degree angle line like that. So this is how you would draw shape A or shape C and this includes already seam allowances. So you then cut out your triangle on that line and are ready to go. Now for triangle B you have the baseline and then you have a kind of mountain on it. So I will again draw a baseline with just a random measurement to give you the idea. So let's pretend this is the right size here. This is the starting point. This is the end point of our measured line. Now you start with the 45 degree angle like that and draw and you can elongate that a bit. And then you go to the end point, again you lay your ruler with the 45 degree guide 
and draw and elongate it until both lines are crossing like that. Now this is how you would draw your large triangle with the long edge as a baseline. So this is uh, shape B. Now when we have prepared the triangles, let's cut them out. I did mine already here. And also we have to get the templates for the curved shapes. Print your templates for the curved shapes out. Now the larger one doesn't fit on one sheet. And you see you have those both lines which indicates where the sheets should overlap. So you go and get yourself a little bit glue, glue those together. It would be easiest to hold your sheets against the light. So I will take in a minute, I go to my window with where I have this side and glue it together. So this is now my glued together half circle. And I will cut it out with a pair of scissors on the curved line. Now here comes a personal tip of mine into play. When you do large blocks with spider seams and with curved seams, then they tend to be distorted a little bit. Say stretch and get out of the measurement or are not really square in the end. There is a trick to get more accurate blocks and that is I make my pieces a little bit larger and later trim the block to the perfect size. As for the curved shape, I make it larger by adding an extra seam allowance to the long straight edge, also to this straight edge and to this straight edge over here. As for the triangle shapes, I also add an extra seam allowance to the long edge. I haven't trimmed that off so far, so instead of one quarter of an inch, I give here half of an inch seam allowance. And use this as my triangle shape. And the same with the curved, I give it half of an inch here. And for the rest, I can go with my pair of scissors. Also for the negative curved shape on the straight edges, I give it that extra quarter of an inch, so we have a half inch of a seam allowance here. And then I just trim, cut out the remaining template with my pair of scissors. So with these templates already prepared, I now start cutting into my fabric. You will notice that you have the same shape from different colors and I already prepared mine. So I have a stack of five different colors which need all the same shape. I can speed up my cutting if I stack them together and then cut through all of them with one cut. So if I want to cut my triangle out here, it could uh, easily move around. So what I do is I pin it a bit in place to secure it and to get that issue out of the way. And now when I have this in place, I can just easily go through all the five layers of fabric do it again here.
And then finally, I make the last cut here. And then I have all the five triangles cut out already for my curved shapes. If I would need these fabrics, which I don't do right now, I could also stack those and then pin my curved shape in place and cut with my rotary cutter on the straight edge and then carefully go along with the rotary cutter around that curved shape and cut that out too. This is how you would cut out your different pieces. You can also place them in a way that it is a little bit fabric saving and frugal. And now let's start. Go to our layout diagram. Let's see what shapes we need and on to the cutting party. Now in the next video, we can go start sewing. Can't wait to see you again next time.